Hey everyone, welcome to the Acrobatic Arts Podcast. I'm Loren, and I will be interviewing some of the top leaders and innovators from the dance and acrobatic industry. If you are a teacher, performer, student, or a lifelong learner like myself, you are sure to find these episodes intriguing and full of inspiration. Acrobatic Arts is passionate about providing current and relevant information for everyone. So please, sit back and enjoy as we share our passion with you and the world. Believe it or not, we are starting Season 3 of the podcast. And to start off the new year, we have a very special episode with Mandy Yip, the CEO and founder of Acrobatic Arts. Mandy shares new developments that are coming in 2023, and she lets us know what the current top trending acro skills are. You won't want to miss this episode. Mandy Yip, welcome back to the Acrobatic Arts Podcast, and Happy New Year! Happy New Year! It's always so great to spend the first week of the year talking with you, Miss Loren. I am so glad to have you here to kick off a new season of the podcast. I sort of love that we've created this tradition of having you on as our first guest, because I know I'm not the only one who looks forward to this episode every year to hear what you have to say. To start this conversation off, I'd like to talk about 2022. I think it was an interesting year for obvious reasons, mostly in light of the pandemic and how we began to return to life and business. Could you share what some of the 2022 highlights were for our teacher community at Acrobatic Arts? For sure. Yeah, it's been a crazy year. It's hard to believe that just one year ago, uh, when we were at the beginning of January 2022, we were worried about whether or not the summer would run and whether or not classes would be able to go. And my kids had spent some time at home from school because the, the school was shut down because of the pandemic. And now it seems to be completely eliminated from our lives. It's, it is a very surreal sort of experience and that that all happened in one year. And the other really cool thing that I saw happen in 2022 was just the innovation of the teachers in our community and how they were able to recreate their studios and recreate their classes um, and really bring things back from a place where they were sort of dismal at the end of 2021 and, and teachers didn't know if acro classes would even continue so watching them innovate and create new spaces for their dancers and watching dancers excel was was just a really cool experience in 22. last year we talked about travel being a huge passion of yours but it's also a requirement of your job you get to meet and talk with people from around the world on a daily basis. And this provides you with various different perspectives about the dance industry, specifically acro. And so your knowledge on these topics is quite extensive. During your travels and conversations, are you seeing any new trends developing in acro? Yeah, so it's that's been really exciting too this year. Uh, I have traveled a lot. I've been all over the world uh, and got to meet with dance teachers from all different places with different cultural experiences and, and the way that they run classes and run their dance studios is all different. Uh, and the way that they run acro is different too. So I've got to see a lot of really interesting things. Uh, I think I could sort of break this question up into two pieces with what's trending for the acro community and the tricks that everybody sort of wants to jump on board with. And then also just what I'm hearing from dance teachers around the world as to what they need from us and, and what their experience is showing them. So I think I could split into two questions. Is that okay? Yeah, for sure. All right. So first of all, the, the tricks that I'm seeing are really trending throughout the acro world right now. There's a couple that I think uh, teachers should get on board with. And if you don't already know what these things are, you should look them up. We have uh, either weekly minis or perhaps Ms. Loren, you could put together podcasts on these skills as well. So the raise is a skill that I keep seeing over and over again. It, it seems to have really uh, swept up in popularity with those advanced dancers. And it's a skill that combines a, an illusion with a a back layout sort of um, in, in this sort of interesting hovering through mid-air kind of skill. And it became popular uh, with Briar Nole when she was on World of Dance. And then we saw, started seeing more and more dancers try and emulate that same skill set. And now we're seeing it 
come up in actual actual classes and and lots of teachers have questions about how to create the foundations for that skill and then also how to spot it so i'm seeing a lot of that uh we're seeing really interesting variations of rolling tinsicas happen so rolling tinsicas have been part of the acrobatic arts syllabus for 10 years but now what we're seeing is all these interesting variations where dancers are able to take those skills from the floor and into standing and vice versa uh they're they're showing us really interesting ways of coming out of turns and into those rolling tinsicas so that's been really cool too and it seems like every dancer has their own variation of that skill which is just so neat to watch in the competition stage as well we're seeing blind handstands also called 12 o'clock sometimes or handstand pirouettes, which is some variation of the handstand that twists and turns in a way that sort of leaves the audience um, with this lack of understanding on how the dancer was able to manipulate their body in that interesting way while being inverted. So that I'm seeing a lot of, and we're seeing a lot of variations of walkovers as well, both forward and backwards walkovers, and especially again using those levels where the dancers are coming up from the floor or going down to the floor in association with some variation of a walkover. All of those four skills really require solid, solid foundations. And that's what's so cool about the acrobatic arts syllabus is that when teachers are able to produce those really solid foundations, they can create these really interesting variations that make their dancers stand out. I agree. If anyone's been keeping up with our TikTok account, we have put lots of those skills on and they always get lots of views and likes and comments. So definitely trending in the acro world. Now, speaking of trends, acrobatic arts has made some huge pivots during the pandemic, including developing a live online version of the module one teacher training as well as taking other courses and workshops online in a way that had never been seen before. This has made it significantly easier for teachers to gain access to training and has also created new opportunities for so many. This is also a huge credit to you, Mandy, and what so many of us know about you, your desire to not only provide quality acrobatic training, but to also make it accessible to dance teachers around the world. So let's keep moving along. Tell us about any new and exciting things that Acrobatic Arts is working on and that we can look forward to in 2023. Sure, yeah, it has been a really cool experience. Something that I, I think is a blessing that came out of the pandemic, if we can say that, uh, but our ability to reach dance teachers in remote areas of the world where we wouldn't otherwise be able to help them with their acrobatic journey has been a really rewarding part of uh, 2022. And we were able to reach students and studios uh, in places in very remote villages where traveling to a, a location like the United States or Canada or Australia or the UK was just not possible possible for them. Um, and, and now they're able to offer those classes to their dancers. And we're seeing amazing gains from these kids who are so hungry to learn how to do things correctly. So that has been just amazing to watch. In 2022, we also were able to travel to Japan and open um, the Japanese Division of, of Acrobatic Arts, which is also very exciting. So we can hardly wait to work more with our Japanese certified teachers there and see acrobatic arts in their school system. Uh, one of the things that's really interesting about that project is that they're using acrobatic arts as a way to produce social and physical literacy, which I know is near and dear to your heart, Ms. Loren, because it's part of our preschool program. And they see acrobatic arts as a way to promote those things in the classroom, right to their regular elementary school students. So, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of children will be able to experience that through this program, which is just so fun and exciting. Plus, I absolutely love Japan. I love the culture. I love the people. I love the food. All the things about it were pretty awesome. Wow. Japan sounds so amazing. And I just think it's incredible that acrobatic arts has such a worldwide reach. But what else is happening in 2023? We were able to work on the module two course in 2022, just behind the scenes. And actually you were a really big part of that as well, Ms. Loren. We were able to update the module two course flexibility sections. So in keeping with our philosophy of constantly staying on the cutting edge of everything that's new and innovative in acrobatics and also just in 
the anatomy of the body. We've updated the flexibility sections of that course. So it's about three hours of new information that teachers are going to receive. Everything from how fascia and nerves contribute to flexibility of a student, to how to promote better flexibility and healthy bodies in those dancers. So that is a really exciting new project we've been working on. The information that's now in there is so current and relevant to teachers. I know they're absolutely going to love the new flexibility sections and that will launch in April of this year. In January, we have Accelerate Mini coming to Australia for the first time ever. So that is really exciting. We've never run Accelerate outside of Canada. Uh, and this is our first little test to make sure that everything is going to work out perfectly for Accelerate Mini. And then we'll probably end up taking that more on the road in 2024. So that's also super exciting. We have a brand new program that we've been working on quietly behind the scenes called Acrofit and teachers and dancers are going to love this program. It is a 14 day challenge and I can't give too much of the information away right now, but we have some special guests coming on for that project. And I know that the dancers and the teachers are going to absolutely love the challenge. So those are some little sneak peeks into what's coming up for 2023. Fantastic. Now, this podcast also has some new ideas for 2023, and based on questions that we have received from our listeners, we are so excited to create a lineup of guests who will continue to inspire and offer useful takeaways. We are planning to have the acro experts discuss some of the skills that teachers need the most support on, or maybe even the skills that we see students struggling with. And Mandy, you sort of touched on the skills that were trending, but also with your expertise and experience, what do you think the top four skills are, or maybe even areas of acro that best fit that description? For sure. When I get to travel around and, and meet with the teachers um, through conventions and expos and other experiences, I get the same questions often. So these would be really great topics for us to explore more here on our podcast. And these topics come from both inexperienced teachers who are just starting out with acro or maybe have never taught acro before all the way up to very experienced teachers who've been teaching it forever but need fresh and new ideas so that they can keep their classrooms current so uh, i think the topic that comes up every single year is aerials uh, teachers always want more help on how to create aerials that are going to have soft landings, that are going to look beautiful on stage, that are going to be seamless, that aren't going to have those chicken wings. So that would be a really great uh, spot to start. I think that piece about physical literacy and keeping kids engaged is a question I get a lot. We're seeing that coming out of the pandemic, the, the dancers are often really unfocused. They have a hard time staying um, present with the classroom. And during the pandemic, they were on screens a lot and, and there wasn't a lot required of them um, to achieve new things. That's just the, the world that they grew up living in. And for some of these kids, that was half their lives. So teachers are struggling with how to keep kids engaged and how to really promote that physical literacy, get them up and moving and keeping that fun. And I think that's a really challenging thing for teachers in all genres of dance and acrobatics is no different. But I think what acrobatics has that is exciting is that element of doing something new, something fresh that they've never tried before. So I would love to see something about that. It would be really great if we could do something on tumbling for dancers, especially the piece on getting more power. Uh, lots of dance teachers find that their students are able to do some of the limbering and flexibility skills in acrobatics, but the tumbling comes more with more difficulty. And I think that that's a product of a few things. We don't have a sprung floor like a gymnast has, so that can be very challenging because we have to produce all of that energy from our own bodies. And then also it takes a long time to learn those skills, especially back tumbling, like back handsprings and layouts and things like that. So I think that those would be really great areas to focus in on as well. And then the question I get asked by all teachers of all levels from all walks of life is how do we work with multiple levels in one class? And another sort of result of the pandemic is that 
we do see multiple levels in one class all the time. Uh, some of our classes are smaller, maybe not all the kids return to ACRO, so then we had to combine levels, and that makes it a little bit challenging for us as teachers to keep those kids engaged and make sure that there is something for everyone in the class, regardless of the level that they're at. So that would be a really great uh, podcast for us to focus in on. Fantastic. I think our listeners are going to be in for a treat. I can't wait to bring our expert guests on the show to discuss these topics in more depth. Thank you, Mandy, very much for giving us those ideas. And Mandy, I hope you know how much I value our conversations and time together. I know the listeners appreciate the wonderful information that you bring every year. Thank you so much for being the first guest of Acrobatic Arts Podcast, third season. Thanks for having me, Miss Loren. Exciting things are happening with Acrobatic Arts in 2023. Make sure you stay in the loop. Visit our website, follow us on Instagram, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and if you haven't already, check out the Acrobatic Arts video that went viral on TikTok. Thanks for listening, everyone, and have a great day.